We were always told to be wary of the mushrooms that we picked, but who knew it could bring us so low? One of our own mortally wounded and expecting a swift end. Let me start from the beginning. So there's this glorious circle of initiates, us, and it's our first day on campus. Turns out our group is pretty eclectic. Zoe is down to earth. So uh, my character's name is Zorian Skarn. Uh, he really just goes by Zoe, though. That's uh, what everyone calls him. Uh, he doesn't like any of that uh, that fancy name uh, talk around here. It's so fancy. Fair-fancy. Quite right. And has this weird plantoid Eidolon buddy. <laughs> oh, geez. What Cthulhu monster is Gordy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Art, that artwork is, is a, a little challenging to find for plant <laughs> monsters. Uh, I am going to be playing Klaus. Klaus is our quintessential mall ninja. So we specifically turn our eyes to an open top floor window, and we look into this dimly lit, modest room. And this man stands slightly shorter than average for a human, with platinum white hair down to his shoulders. In the candlelight, we can see his ashen complexion and solid black eyes that seem to be smoking. Corsican is our course-correcting party bro. Can I go next? I don't want to follow Matt. <laughs> I want everyone to forget about mine so that... <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. Excellent. Okay, so I am Corsican. I am a Matanji half-orc. Trying on different outfits, trying to look good. Got the hair, he knows it's gonna be raining out, so he's putting extra product in there just to get it perfect so it doesn't fall the one way or the other or whatnot. Uh, check his clock, he sees it's time to go, he takes a big breath. And a little like pep talk, let's do this, it's gonna be a great first day, and he, uh, he steps out with confidence. Tell me a little bit Did... about his hair. He I'm described sorry, his hair. Oh, okay. okay. No, no, it's okay. It's important questions about the hair. I don't get to answer those often, so. <laughs> Me either. Matt, are you ready? Spotlight's on you. No. Oh, I oh, want it in its of... full beauty and glory. Oh. And Otua, our silver-spooned sorcerer. I am playing uh, as the character Otua Marla. So Otua Marla always had such disdain for the rain. Not just for simple reasons like how the mixture of water and dirt Born from the ground would ensure all those that gather around them, but are still a few years away from actually capturing anything memorable kept of good their company own. and provided a good life for his progeny as a key purveyor of the Sun Orchid elixir moons, trade, listlessly going like through the motions of Asmanthar High Society, jumped so at the chance to leave the pain behind yet to enjoy. He rises, plunks down three extra pieces of gold, and marches upstairs as everyone in the room gives him a quiet once over. That's all the time we have here. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, can you write like all of my scenes, please? Time to prove ourselves. Professor Ott. Teacher Ott, as a, if you're a student. And he's played by a young Morgan Freeman. Oh. He's uh, Wait, God always is, in... The... God is our teacher? No, that's old Morgan Freeman. Oh, sorry. Decides to play an introduction game to get to know us, while letting us shine with our skill and wit. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not good at this. Um, can you ask nope. me who I am? You, I'm good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Corsican, a- anything anything you could do? Uh, help me out here? Uh, dude, I got nothing. I don't really know what oh. we're doing here. Shoot. After passing the tests, we get these cool beads that signify our attendance in Bagambia. Add these two beads uh, and... Have you ever had a dream? Add, bead, add these two that... beads to your... This um, will identify you as Nishia and tell do, you do everyone that I was your business teacher you for the university. So you uh, make your way to the Spire Dormitory. Then we get escorted to the Spire Dormitory. For the tour of our future dorm, Essie is given the reins. Could you say your name one more time, please? I don't know if I caught that e- correctly. Essie, it's, it's E-S-I. And the last name? The last name. Kajana. Can you spell that? <laughs> Like, you know, when you have to go to the bathroom, you go to Dijana. Oh, okay, got DJ, it. Yeah. DJANA. Dijana. No, got it. Nice to meet you, Essie, but Dijana, I am Korzakon. We boldly stride into the majestic dorm, and we run into Ignasi, a well-off entrepreneur. Oh, the, you are the new students. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm Ignasi. I go up, hey, Ignasi, is that short for anything? Oh, I have to talk in my low voice. Hey, Ignasi, is that short for anything? <laughs> 
What up? I hope this is your character doing that. Off the chest out. You can call me Corsicon. Oh, very nice. <laughs> is that short for anything? No. Okay. <laughs> I do sell uh, up to third level alchemical items. Third Good. level, you say? Those day spark notes, day man. one on campus and we already <laughs> met our dealer. Yeah, as, <laughs> <not to say. laughs> yeah. as he decides to showcase her room, a safe but messy space. That's a messy room. Oh, man. Uh oh. That, was, that is a messy room. She's like, it's a large room, but it is a bit lonely. Uh, it's I'll keep you company. <laughs> yeah. It was a little forward there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, mean, but, uh, I didn't uh, mean it in that way. No, not Corsicon. <laughs> I, I, meant, I, I can't get over the location of her bed. I feel like that's just being <laughs> feasible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like she was ransacked and we needed to like solve, like, solve the case right now. But she's, she's she likes us to figure out who to trashed your room. <laughs> Oh, nice. We get to free form choose our room. This won't be chaos. I start like kind of walking over briskly <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and say this one. I, I'll take this one right in the in the social. Well, cool. I'll take this room. <laughs> what? Mine's the smallest room. Hold on. I'm going to go explore. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Okay, you your room. In this room. This is not OK. <laughs> I'm on this bed. Uh, you've got mine. a big room. All right. Uh, Trade team. Mine, Corsican. <laughs> Uh, a two-o. Two-o. This is my room, Corsicon. <laughs> I know, I just wanted to check it out. Is that all right? <laughs> Corsican runs into the shirt frogs. As you uh, walk in, uh, the a couple of clothes start folding themselves. And they fold up into little frogs. And the little frogs appear. So don't move your character. Any, I'm going to pause you. <laughs> <laughs> well, How does it feel, that. Dolph? These little frogs like hop out of the uh, out of the laundry and they come to attack you. What? And, uh, you froze me. I can't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, seriously? Uh, and we are going to go into initiative. No. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> You saw these yeah. things? Yeah, of course. Okay. Ah, wait, lower pitch. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, war cry of a, uh, a great sailor. But handles them with a swift kick to the buttons. <laughs> or you can take your weapon out if you want. Nah, I'm just gonna kick it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna kick it. Okay. You're like, what is this thing? Oh, come on. Sweet. I w- come to find out these shirts just don't know we're special yet. Thanks, Sassy. We then get field tripped to meet several important people around campus. I'm Anchor. I, I, I'm getting real nervous. I, I'm Anchor Root. Do you like Beatles? Love them. <laughs> in in what manner? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I'm a little impartial. I don't love or hate them. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I, I have Beatle friends. Uh, uh, do you want to see? Yeah, totally. I, yeah, seems yeah. like I should say no. <laughs> She puts her claws down in there and she pulls out uh, these these big beetles. And uh, she's like, oh, th- this is Frankie over here. And this is Syndra. S- Frankie and Syndra, they're, they're really cool. You want to s- come say hi? Well, well, I didn't expect I wanted to, but now I do. So Klaus will come in, uh, walking past the others. I can't. Uh, hello, me. beetles. <laughs> and starts, I guess, tickling them. I don't know if you can tickle a beetle. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, they like that. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can you can come tickle my beetles anytime you like. <laughs> You're so, so nice. And she says, <clears throat> "Hello, I'm I'm Lamusi Yao. I'm the head chef here. I always love to meet the new students. How are you all doing?" And she gives each of you a mango. Mm. Thank you. Be- I'm great. Mong- Thing He's and there's this little guy. He is a lizard man. I think they're called and, lizard folk. Uh, oh. Yes. Oh, look at that yes, smile. we don't do lizard man anymore. Let's, let's, oh, lizard that's folk. not even a lizard folk. Come on. No, I lied. It's a kobold. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at first you thought he was a lizard man, but he's actually a kobold. And he says, um, he played by Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's a good. Hey goal. guys. Uh, Hey, I'm Zokan. It's uh, nice to meet you. Uh, come on in. As he tells us that we are to help each of the branches of the Academy over the next many days. Hybrim, the chicken-centric dwarf, wants us to help him and the rain scribes. 
by locating a wandering market. Uh, come on, can come I, on, Otua. Let's just do it. Go. Let's just we, do we it. We gotta go get these chickens and get our merit badge. Let's go. Yeah, let's just Our-bead. do it. All right, hear me out. They lay magical eggs that can randomly hatch any creature. However, these baby chicks are frail, very susceptible to the condition of death. Be sure to keep these chickens very warm, very dry, but they <laughs> oh. shall survive. I, I feel like this is the first time I've heard you speak. Maybe it's because of the modulation. I try not to meddle in those mundane activities. <laughs> I had no that I thought might be useful. Though I very much appreciate it. And formally, nice to meet you, Gordy. It is very nice to meet you. I hope to be of some assistance in our journeys together. Well, I, I hope so. Thanks for all the info. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Of I'm glad Gordy's on your guys' side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if you zoom in real close to that picture. <laughs> right. So this group has a brilliant plan and splits the party. So do you guys want to go get the laundry? And I might I might see if I can chat to the Cheshire, Cheshire cat yeah, ch- guy. Chai. 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 Yeah. You might know something. What about uh, the drug dealer? Oh, out. I was going to hit him up next. Okay. Oh. <laughs> For unrelated things. Totally oh, yes, unrelated. <laughs> Zo will will go out and kind of go ask his contacts and he'll come back here. Uh, cool. Anybody going with him? I'll go with I'll go with Zo. Cool. And Gordy. Cool. And Korzakon, you are going to see who can hunt down in the... Yeah, I'll stay here with the Tua. If the Tua is aligned. Yeah. Cool. Let's cool. Scope we'll things s- out. Cool. We'll start there then. So you guys head into the dorm. Uh, you knock on Ignacy's door. Uh, no answer. Okay. Is uh, Shasire still around? Uh, you head over to Chai's room. And Chai. uh, he, uh, yeah, Ch- Cheshire is fine. Uh, you uh, knock on the door. He says, come in. Would you be able to lend us this uh, warm, supple poof so we could take it with us at the market? No. <laughs> what if I use my diplomacy? Go ahead. <laughs> DC 100. <laughs> Guess what, sir? That's a natural 20. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, what a great way to spend that roll. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets up and he walks about five feet over to another poof and lays down. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Thank you, kind sir. Chai. Do you have any idea where we might find the the market today? Is there a schedule we can look up of where it pops up? Oh, I think so. Um, you know, I, Lorna, if you'd roll a diplomacy for me. Oh, I'm so bad at diplomacy. Maybe intimidation. Oh, no, then? I have a plus five. Hey, oh. Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. For level uh, one. 17. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's, oh yes, yes. Uh, it is. Um, it's on the west side of the city today. Uh, would you like a uh, a drink to go, a roadie, a trailie, as we call oh, them now in the past? Why not? Yeah, that's so kind of you. So you guys head out, and then we flash over to Zoe and Klaus, and you guys head over to a contact you have actually. Hey yo, hey yo, oh, hey, hey. How, how you doing, sir? Um, uh, I- I'm good. I forget what's your name again. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, Brody. This, Brody. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is also a natural twenty for a twenty-seven. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. In fact, and uh, I would love to help you out. Uh, it's on the west side of the city today. Uh, it, was, it was nice meeting you. Oh uh, yes, yeah, nice to meet you, weird guy. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Great right, well, uh, that was pretty easy. You want to go back and uh, meet our friends and uh, sh- tell them the good news that we found out where this market is? Because they have no idea at all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Independently finding the market where these chickens are to be found, the group moves in. But not without some solid pre-planning and pre-gaming with the two of Oh, uh, hey, uh, guys, uh, we found found out where the market is. Uh, don't don't worry about going to, going to try and find it. Uh, uh, my, my friend Barodi, he, he, he kind of knew where it was. Oh. So, did, so did we. We drank with Chai, and uh, he gave yeah. us his pillow. I'm like, two oh. drinks in, you guys took so long to get here. Oh, well, <laughs> that's that's but great. Thanks. Seeing the uh, the large poof, can we craft that into, like, a special safe haven for the chickens? Like, put a, a built-in umbrella 
I was just like, thinking, like, rip it open and chug the chicks There's in. also that, uh, but I didn't want them to suffocate. <laughs> I'm worried about the suffocation. <laughs> you don't have to close it up on, on the... No, <laughs> that's the only way. Have you ever dealt with chicks? I'm just kidding, I've never handled a chicken. No, I can't. <laughs> no. You've never... Never mind, Josh. Too far. I said chicken. Uh-huh, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, I did. As the crew rolls up on the merchants, Korzakon showcases his suaveness. Guys, I think we should go in and help her get a better price in the goat, just to get her on her good side. Uh. Wow, that's I'll... a fine goat you have over there. Come on. Uh, she says, uh, uh, she says, thank you, thank you. You see he... this goat? She knows it's fine. She sees quality. Now you he... need he sees quality. <laughs> uh, they see quality. And No, but I, that's not my pronoun. My pronoun is not they. <laughs> uh, in my bad. He sees, he sees quality. <laughs> Eight, six of them for, for 18 gold. That's fine. Mm-hmm. All right. She takes out the packing tape and tapes them all together for you. And, <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> the ducks? <laughs> They're the chicks. Oh, my uh, God. And then she says, uh, well, do we I, uh, open up the puff and just chuck him in? <laughs> <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> and now, with the chicks in cushion, we make our way back to Havrim. Sadly, Gordy kills one from a neglect, but five make it. And that is going to uh, finish the first assignment. Nice job, guys. I do believe we have a winner. Yeah. Um, Didn't get kicked out yet. <laughs> yeah. So the sweet taste of victory lands on the taste buds of these adventurers. And to celebrate these good times, the group parties at Zoe's for the evening. Or I mean, is there anything you want to do in I the think evening? We, I think we got to go to uh, Zoe's for dinner. Yeah, yeah. trying to do. So you let your wife know about everyone coming over, I assume. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'll just show up with the food in them. Oh. No, it's just like real life. Yeah. 100 <laughs> <laughs> um, percent hey hon uh i brought everyone over uh but don't worry i picked up the food uh it's got to be cooked though that you get to cook <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're gonna be the bestest of friends and uh we're gonna be together uh, a lot and we gotta go through a lot together so i feel like uh, you should be part of the family you know so glad we met i look forward to it Speaking of planning head, uh, I brought some some fried Ojafiri chicken appetizers for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. You guys uh, have a wonderful evening, a drunken, fantastic evening, uh, celebrations and kinship. And uh, you guys head home, uh, take an Uber, uh, <laughs> a Nantuber. So after a night of merriment and drinking, we find ourselves before Essie. She tasks us this morning as a representative of the Tempest Sun Mages, those entrusted to defend Magambia and all that it represents. She says, ah, I'm so glad you guys are back this morning. Now, you did such a wonderful job yesterday. We have a very special assignment for you, and it has everything to do with gremlins. So when she asks us to clear out the storage barn of gremlins without hurting them, we took it seriously. You do know a little bit about these gremlins. So you know they're fey. Uh, you know they're obsessed with gnolls. And they have an aversion to small bells made of semi-precious metals. Oh, well, good thing I have one of those just lying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We stumble on our secret weapon. Sorry to interrupt you. The friend with all of the uh, animals, they may have a bell. Oh, um, so, um, uh, anchor. A- a- anchor root? Yeah. The, the, oh, the, bone, that- the bone collector. Who also yeah, had bad bones, they're already dead. No, but there's some alive ones, right? The, the bone collector, Noel. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and she's a Noel. Just bring, let's just bring the Noel. After getting Anchor to sit down with the gremlins, we discover quite a bit. Why don't you go ahead and, uh, and, and announce yourself and and tell the gremlins that, that they are to leave at once the, the, the city, go by someone else. He says, do, do, you see, do you see the gremlins? No, I don't see them, but just, just act like they're here. Be confident. Okay, so he steps in, and uh, and she she says, <laughs> and um, nothing happens at first, and uh, but then all of a sudden these little creatures uh, start showing up on the top shelf. I think you did it. I think and you did it. I'm feeling a little freaked out. I'm going to go. Okay. Well, hey, thank you so much. Thank you so for your much. Help. Uh, this was. 
incredibly, incredibly helpful. I, I don't think we could have done this without you. Um, so, oh, okay, okay, bye. Oh, <laughs> she starts running. The best. <laughs> okay. But the hidden door leading to an underground tunnel draws us in to investigate. Who knew it would lead to learning so much about the campus and ourselves? Uh, rock, <laughs> paper, scissors? Uh, Klaus will go down first. Nah, Gordy can go down first. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and you are you lose them in the uh, in this cavern. Mm. Convenient, indeed. But also curious as to why these are so commonly trekked caverns. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think this is something that we gotta ask uh, people who've been here before. Though we pass on what we discovered to Essie, our night fades as our group splits away. And uh, get ready for your next day, in which uh, you. You come out, and uh, this time there's three people there. There's Anchor Root, Cheshire, and uh, someone you haven't met yet. And Cheshire says, um, Today, you're going to be making some bone oil. And we'll wrap the episode there. What the hell is bone oil? I'm That's regretting my admittance into the school. <laughs> <laughs> bone oil just can't be bad. As the group rallies, the glorious morning greets us with our next challenge from the Cascade Bearers, the Innovative Problem Solvers Branch. Mariama explains we can protect the school from the gremlin threat through a ritual to infuse bells with magic. Is, oh, um, um, yeah, okay, so uh, uh, we, 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 we need, um, we need, we need bone oil. Are you taking notes? You might uh, want to take notes. Yeah, no, I've I, got I'm it. taking notes. I'm taking I've notes. Got it. Anchor explains the material that we will need and where to get them. And, and then uh, and like some ca- caterpillars. So uh, he he has under he pulls out this, her little robe, uh, a small container, and she, she unscrews it, and a little caterpillar crawls out. She says, "These are the caterpillars you, you need." And she's looks a little caught up in it because she knows you're gonna have to squish a bunch of these <laughs> caterpillars together that she loves so much. I was gonna say, so the the way to get oil is just to press something very hard until it becomes a liquid. <laughs> oh, it's more like yes. a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Then, then you need bone oil. So, mm-hmm. but you can't just can't bring any bones. They need they need to be uh, lucky bones. So make sure lucky you get bones. like the wishbone. Does it matter what kind of bones at all? Like where they came from? No, I feel I, like every animal has some lucky bones. You all have some lucky bones. Well, but, all um, right, I'll sacrifice for the team, guys. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, we need scarlet cat uh, mushrooms. It's a mushroom oil. And she also uh, tells you about uh, how to make the mushroom oil, which is gradual squeezing of the mushrooms for one hour. Yes. (laughs) Gradual squeezing, (laughs) you say. It's a long time. Your hands are going to be strong. one hour. We can take turns. (laughs) We decide to be smart about the gathering quest and focus on the two components that are in the forest, then circle back around for some lucky bones. Oh, Look at that beautiful map. Look, it's a nice looking map, nature. right? Oh. So you come to a true clearing with one giant tree in the middle, uh, <laughs> like a donut, <laughs> like the hole of a donut. And uh, this tree is just riddled with big, fat, soft, scarlet cat mushrooms, mm. ready to be squeezed. Right. And if you zoom in, you can see them. They look like, well, looks like a tree's like bad acne. A bad yeah. rash, yeah. Or, or some sort of virus. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Should we be squeezing these? Yeah. We push forward bravely to gather mushrooms from a tree. All oh. right, I will move up. I'll move closer. I'll get up right up in this in this party with you, Klaus, and I will Act. cast my spell. Oh, great! So you cast Mage Hand. What's your What's your magic look like? So it's pretty clumsy right now because I'm okay. I'm new to it. Probably over em- emphasize like body movements and whatnot. Something catches your eye. You look a little bit to the right, and there's another mushroom that doesn't look quite right. And then it blinks and looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's time to roll for initiative. Ooh. <laughs> oh no! A cucumber mushroom attacks us. Oh shit! What you see is this thing. 
I'm very curious. So, if someone yeah, wants to look like Toad, that... yeah, looks like a like an angry pickle. <laughs> Where is it? Why don't I see it? Shout out, listeners! I got you guys while we work through this. So this this cat, uh, this uh, cucumber looks like a uh, machoke. Uh, he's pretty jacked. Mm. Looks like he's wearing like a passion fruit, uh, like umbrella helmet, which would be his mushroom. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. No, well, that's... actually, I don't know. Maybe I'd go with grapefruit. No, passion fruit. Continue. I apologize, <laughs> Atua. <laughs> that's all we got. No, what the only thing you know is that it seems to be a living fungus. So it is actually a fungus of some sort. Little ones, this one seems to be a fungus. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Gordy. <laughs> Her Klaus will go ahead and draw his sword, ready in action in case it comes close. Not, I'll try not to do it aggressively. So, ready to action, two actions, and draw a sword. All right, so Klaus... Uh, not aggressively draws his sword. <laughs> That's right. And when you look at this guy, he's close up to you. I mean, he is uh, not only like fungus, but he has maybe fungus growing on him. Like these, these big bulging purple blisters all over hundreds of them growing on his green skin. It's pretty disgusting. All right. It's going to be five damage. And then I'll need a, a saving throw, a fortitude saving throw as these blistering these uh, blisters pop and get on your skin. Ooh. Critical fail on a poison, <laughs> I think, is two steps down. Our first fight has begun, and we're not doing so great. First battle, real battle, mm-hmm. and uh, first hits are terrible. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. My ego is hit, folks. My rule is... O2 is like feeling like, you know, feeling some lucky rolls, feeling being like the hero in the situation, uh, but is not going to attack. He is going to almost like a Herb Greenberg kind of machine, think that he can kind of cast reach again and then cast electric arc again, but target it at the bark of the branch where the mushroom is being magic handed currently. And for those of you listening, not watching, uh, both uh, Josh and Eric are highly skeptical of this move, so we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> I just <laughs> like the idea that you're you're hitting a tree with electricity. <laughs> I, like, we know how that goes. The bark explodes, but the mage hand, I don't know what, this is my mage hand sign, also my <laughs> um, giraffe. Duck face? Yeah. Uh, shadow. And uh, is already holding the mushroom. So, of course, it's just, it blows off, but the hand's like, whew, is hanging in the air. So, you have the mushroom in hand. AKA, it worked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just for those at home listening and not watching, there was a major flex done just now. <laughs> not a reflex save, just a regular flex. <laughs> just a regular flex. I roll for flex. <laughs> Klaus stepping forward and slashes downward, and the spell creates this ethereal construct of this, like, tiger paw just dragging its claws across this creature, and now we have fungus spears for our burgers. And as the spears fall to the ground, they explode (laughs) into a big (laughs) of uh, of spores. Well, thank you for killing it, Klaus. Do you think this thing has bones? Yeah. We kill the attacker that has no bones, and sadly, Korzakon is uh, hanging on by a thread, so we don't get to use those bones either. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> um... I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> You're the we one that ran away from the healing. We are. So you take 15 poison damage. 15? Oh. In terms of HP? Mm-hmm. I'm at 8 HP. <laughs> Before so or you're after zero HP. And Korzakon's laying on the ground, Otua, his hand on your his chest, and it comes back to regular breathing. And we will see you next week. Oh, oh man, this is rough. Oh, yeah. This is rough. This yeah. is a really, really bad disease. We might get those bo- bones after all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might get the Korzakon bones after all. Probably. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Real good. In the woods. My friends is why you never go pick your own shrooms. 